Hello, welcome to this week's video, which is all about narcissism, pathological narcissism, and self-esteem. Healthy levels of self-esteem or low levels of self-esteem. Going to be looking at it as a kind of on a scale and as on a gradient and get try and dispel a few misnomers and a few myths about narcissists and who's a narcissist and who's not. To begin, if we imagine a scale, and at one end we have pathological narcissism, a full-blown narcissist. In the middle, we have healthy levels of self-esteem. That is a healthy level of narcissism, and then we move to the other end of the scale where we have low levels of self-esteem, low levels of self-worth, Therefore, we have an unhealthy level of narcissism, just as we do up the other end of the scale, except they're in opposition. So, narcissism, what is it? What's it for? What does it do? Why do we have it? Do we all have it? And the short answer is yes, we all have it, to, as I said, to varying degrees across the spectrum. Narcissism generally nowadays kind of refers to negative traits in people, negative narcissistic traits. But in essence, narcissism is about self-esteem. It is about, I am important. I have um, ambition. I have drive. I feel I deserve to be in a loving relationship. I feel I deserve to uh, have a good job. I feel I deserve to, uh, or I've earned uh, my place. I have good skills. I'm going to celebrate my victories and my wins. I'm going to take time out for self-care. I'm going to say no to some people sometimes because I need to preserve my sense of self and my self-care. These are kind of all healthy levels of narcissism. Sometimes they're looked at a little bit negatively, but in general, it's a healthy level of narcissism because it's a healthy level of self-esteem. So you will place yourself um, at the center of your world most of the time as someone important, as someone worth loving, and as someone worth taking care of. You will set boundaries. Um, of how you want to be treated and how you treat others and you will probably push yourself forward in the world and try to better yourself achieve more get more and lead quite a fulfilling life so you have a healthy level of narcissism if you go to the other end of the scale let's go to the lower end of the scale first if you lack a healthy level of narcissism and you have an unhealthy level of narcissism or little to no narcissism Generally, you will display as someone who has low self-worth, low self-esteem. You will be trampled on, persecuted. People will humiliate you, devalue you, and you will play into that narrative. When I say play into that narrative, you will believe that narrative. And the more you believe it, the more you'll do it. And so it becomes a vicious circle. Now, this often sometimes happens from being abused in some way, physically, sexually, emotionally, mentally, and you will find yourself sliding down the scale of having healthy levels of narcissism to having negative levels of narcissism and self-esteem, self-worth. This can also start in childhood, but I'll get onto that in a bit. You can also, as an, either as a child or as an adult, this can happen to you. Maybe you have a really, really horrendous relationship. Maybe you end up having a relationship with a narcissist and which ends up throwing you down that other end of the spectrum. Narcissist, key trait up this end of the scale. Complete lack of empathy. We'll put that right at the end. No empathy at all. No empathy, no remorse, complete inability to understand anybody else's life, situation, walking issues, however you want to put it. I don't get what your problem is. You know, just can't see it. Won't apologize. Don't see that they did anything wrong. They will be omnipotent, omniscient. They will be grandiose. They will have this massive sense of self. They will be the center of not only their world, but the universe. And they will make sure that everybody around them tells them the same which is why they do love bombing and move into the ide idealization phase within relationships because they want that admiration back. So this is what you'll find up right on the very other end of this spectrum. So this is like plus too much narcissism from in the middle. This is massive, amount, massive amounts of narcissism leading to being pathological narcissist or on that scale. They, they will idolize, they will devalue it. I've done videos on this. They will be abusive. Uh, they will suffer with narcissistic rage, anger. They will want love, but won't want you to get too close. They won't like any kind of critical feedback, even despite how it's presented, because any potential threat 
through that false shell, that false self, which they've built up around that vulnerable true self inside, um, any potential threat has to be got rid of. So they will be abusive, they will be angry, they will be raged, they will devalue, they will humiliate, they will, in short, be malevolent, malicious, um, whilst appearing quite charming at the same time. So, and if you were involved in this, you will find yourself definitely moving further and further and further down the scale. The longer you are around them, the more time you are involved with them, the more you uh, will suffer and end up at the other end of the scale with lacking any kind of nar level of narcissism yourself. Moving from that, what's often thrown around is uh, they were a narcissist. They're a narcissist. And generally what most people refer to is that someone had narcissistic traits, not that they were a full-blown pathological narcissist. Again, we can move around this center part of the scale. So let's say we have a healthy level of narcissism we get ourselves into a situation, maybe it's a bit challenging, uh, maybe we're not doing so well, maybe we have a bit of imposter syndrome, something like that, and we move down the scale a little bit. Our self-esteem drops, our self-worth drops, or we do make a really big mistake and our self-worth drops, uh, or our self-esteem drops, and we're like, mm, okay. We'll move down the scale a little bit, but chances are we'll move back up because we had a healthy level of narcissism. So we go, okay, right, okay, how do I fix this? Well, I need to do this, I need to do that. And that's the healthy narcissism talking. We can flick up the other way when we're challenged, when we're pushed. Maybe in relationships we have got a few hang-ups from the past where we feel we need to maybe control a situation, manipulate a situation a little bit in order to feel safe. Might add in there, not everybody manipulates and controls to coerce. Uh, sometimes they do it in order to feel safe, which is comes across as a narcissistic trait but isn't necessarily narcissism it can come from the other side of it so i need to manipulate situation because i need to feel safe and in control for different reasons to what a narcissist would so maybe someone has a bit of rage if they're challenged a bit because they feel a bit insecure so this will be like sliding up the scale and moving around up here like yeah okay they have a few narcissistic traits which are a little bit strong but doesn't necessarily make them a full-blown narcissist because I've always also seen them down here in the center quite healthy and I've also seen them over here a bit. So we can move around. Hopefully we just move around the center a little bit and are not too uh, shaken around and battered around by the world too much where we slide all over the place or we slide just that way. How is a narcissist developed? I have done a video on this. Uh, narcissists develop in one of two ways and this is very, very short and brief. Either in and it's in childhood. Either they are given an overinflated sense of self from the environment, from the parents, maybe one parent actually criticizes them and the other parent chastises that parent. And that gives an even stronger message. I really am the center of the universe. If the child experiences huge amounts of neglect, abuse, devaluing, the child may well slide down that end of the scale and end up with a low self-esteem, low sense of self-worth, hence low amounts of narcissism. Or they will counteract that unconsciously and move up to the other end of the scale. Well, if the environment's not going to tell me, then I'm going to tell myself. And not only am I going to do that, the stronger the me devaluing message from the environment, the stronger the reaction can be to it. So the stronger, the more powerful the overinflated sense of self becomes, the stronger the narcissistic traits become, the, str the higher the levels of pathological narcissism become, if that makes any sense to you at all. You know, it's kind of two ways. Do I curl up and die under my devalue, under the devaluing from my parents and the immediate environment, or do I switch it completely the other way and come out grandiose, omnipotent, omniscient, and I am the center of the universe, and I would, you know, absolutely get rid of any threat to that kind of idea of my sense of self. So I hope that helps a little bit, uh, like I say, narcissism is something we all have narcissistic traits are also something we all have to varying degrees and we can also lack it as well or have it abused out of us uh, for want of a better phrase so uh, like i said it's just a bit of an overview i hope it helps and in the meantime please take in the meantime please take very good care of yourselves adios <laughs>